So hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've been getting a lot of questions about what kind of containers I prefer using for my terrarium builds. So today I'll be covering that uh, in this video. So I have two types of containers. Uh, so here on my left I've got containers which are good for building open terrariums. And on my right I have containers which I uh, prefer using for closed terrarium builds. So let us talk about containers for open terrariums. I have a very fancy bowl here. I bought it very recently. I got it from a garden store and it looks great. Um, I'm planning to actually uh, make a wabikusa in this. Um, but you can also use this kind of containers for making open terrariums. It's pretty wide. The, you can see the, the opening is pretty wide so you can have a uh, good mix and match of plants in this uh, and you know I have seen people using uh, fish bowls so you can also use fish bowls I don't have one uh, right now with me but you can use fish bowl of uh, any size there are bigger ones available there are smaller ones you could use one of those to uh, build a terrarium uh, but yeah do not keep fishes in a fish bowl it's 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 not good it's not enough space for them but you can always use a fish bowl uh, to make a terrarium like an open terrarium. Uh, you can also uh, make a, a small miniature terrarium in a glass like this. And uh, you know, maybe one or two plants and uh, it's, 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 it's a good option. I have another interesting looking container here. I think this uh, uh, is a, a, a great option if you want to build a kind of a miniature landscape you know you can mix and match your plants you can have a little bit of scape with driftwood with stones and rocks and create a very interesting miniature landscape uh, one of my favorite uh, containers are you know capsules like this now there's an advantage of using uh, you know these kind of uh, small terrarium containers you can buy them from craft stores or even uh, online from sites like amazon uh, the advantage is that you know the opening is on the side and it's not on the top so for a container like this where the opening is on the top they'll keep losing moisture so you need to water your plants more regularly to keep them hydrated but in my experience i've seen containers like this they uh, retain moisture better than uh, containers which has the opening at the top. Uh, the reason being is when condensation happens, you know, it goes on the top, it hits the uh, top which is closed and uh, then, you know, it, it trickles down. So there's more water retention in containers like this. And of course, they look great. They come in great shapes. You have this uh, kind of a capsule uh, shape here. I have one which looks like a bulb. And I have one more like a pod shape so you can build probably a small terrarium with an air plant which you know it's the type of plants like succulents and cacti which do not um, like close environments they prefer uh, you know airy environments open environments you know you can make terrariums uh, with such plants in these kind of containers Another type of container you can use is actually these nano fish tanks. Now of course they are not good for <laughs> keeping fish but you can always make a, you know a small uh, terrarium, an open terrarium in containers like this. You can play around with the space. The glass quality is very good. It's clear glass so your plants uh, and your scape will be displayed very nicely from outside and uh, these kind of containers you can buy from the local aquarium uh, stores and you can use them to make beautiful miniature landscapes i think it holds around 2.5 liters of water so you could also uh, use this to make uh, nano aquascapes for plants or even things like uh, wabikusa or a small Paludarium or a riparium. Very good, very good for those kind of projects. Mm. 
Now let us look at some of the options we have for closed terrariums. Uh, one of my most favorite container has to be something like this. Uh, the reason being this has got a latch on lid which is made of glass. Now this is completely airtight. It's, it's got a rubber uh, you know, uh, gasket here. So this uh, will keep it airtight when closed and it will retain the moisture and you know help uh, to set up the rain cycle inside this. The other thing is that this has got a glass lid so which means that if you have overhead lighting your plants will get sufficient lighting from the top and it will also look good. Uh, so I always prefer uh, containers which has a glass top or like a, you know, a transparent or you know an acrylic top like this. So I have one more container here. This is a very interesting looking uh, square shaped container. You can choose which side you want to be the front. And this one also as you can see has got uh, a transparent lid. It's not glass, it's made of acrylic but does the job. And this one is stainless steel so this will not rust. Uh, so this is a good choice for a container. Also, uh, the size is big, so I always suggest that if you are making terrariums, uh, closed terrariums uh, for the first time, choose a container uh, uh, that's big. You know, don't uh, use uh, small containers like this. Like this, uh, you can make terrariums in small containers, but the thing is that if your container is big, then you know uh, you are basically setting yourself up for success. Uh, the plants will thrive very well, you can make a good scape and you know the plants will have a lot of room for growth, uh, a very healthy uh, gaseous exchange within the, within the ecosphere so I think that is very much desirable. Now having said that I have also made terrariums in tiny bottles like this, uh, of course those are mostly uh, moss terrariums because you cannot do much in small bottles like this so maybe a little bit of hardscape with uh, rocks and stones pebbles and some moss and they they, they look really nice uh, but sometimes in the long run they dry out uh, so you have to keep them hydrated maybe this these kind of terrariums will need a little bit more maintenance uh, than something which is a bigger one like something like this you know, once you set it up, then you might not need to do any maintenance for the next seven, eight months or even sometimes one year. I have a terrarium which I actually opened after I think around nine or ten months. And, you know, everything inside was thriving. I mean, it, it, it was, it was uh, doing very well, it's still doing very well. So I have used containers like this in the past. I don't will use them much these days the reason being that these lids are made of some kind of a cheap metal now as you know inside the terrarium the lid is always moist because of the condensation and uh, these kind of lids they start rusting and then you know the rain cycle that's happening is has a lot of iron content and i think your terrarium will turn putrid uh, in a in a very short time so uh, when you are making a closed terrarium ensure that you know the lid is either made of glass or made up of at least stainless steel or copper, something that will not rust. And uh, what you can do is, you know, you can probably replace this lid with something else. You can also put a little piece of like, you know, cut a piece of acrylic. You know, you can buy acrylic sheets and you can just place it on top of it. That will also do. You can do that. You can also buy a cork sheet and cut a round, uh, you know, uh, piece of cork and use that as a lid. So then you could use bottles like this, these kind of containers. The other thing is that these kind of containers you can see, it's, it's got, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's got a seam here, okay, on, on, on both sides. So when you're building a terrarium, just you have to ensure that this, these seams are on the side. So choose your front wisely because it, it, it has happened with me in the past that, you know, I have made a terrarium and after that I realized, oh, I mean the front of the terrarium, it, it's got a seam running through it, the glass seam running through it and you know it looks really bad but at that point of time there's nothing you can do. So before you start building a terrarium, choose the front, ensure that the seams are on the side and it's not on the front. So I'm also a great fan of recycling bottles. 
So you know, here I have got a you know a, a, a scotch bottle uh, which uh, you know I'm planning to use for a terrarium build. Great bottle. Okay, looks great. The glass quality is good. Even this a little thick uh, and uh, not not very clear, but still I think you know we can make a good terrarium inside this. It has got a cork lid uh, with a wooden topping. And the opening is quite narrow, so when you're building terrariums in a bottle which has got a very narrow opening, just ensure that your tools can fit in because you should be able to, you know, plant, uh, move around your plants and uh, also you would, you would need to do maintenance, clean the glass and things like that. So just ensure that, you know, your tweezers or whatever tools you're using, yeah, it, it gets through the opening. If, if it doesn't, then, you know, you're going to have a hard time, uh, you know, making that terrarium and even maintaining it. So one thing about cork bottles, I have this little glass bottle here and I had this wine cork. So uh, I'm, it fits in fine. So I thought I will use this little piece of cork for this bottle and make a terrarium in it. Now, one thing about uh, cork is that, you know, I have seen that, you know, they absorb uh, moisture and that will be let out into the air so eventually terrarium built in a container which has a cork lid might need uh, a, a little bit more maintenance in terms of the watering so you might have to open it up you know once a month and hydrate it a little bit uh, because of the loss of moisture which is continuously happening because of the cork lid so that's something to be kept in mind what else ah, so another thing you can do is you know, this is again a single malt bottle and uh, you can use these kind of bottles in a very interesting way. Okay, you can see the shape is very interesting. So I have just glued it uh, with silicone glue uh, onto a piece of wood. So now what you can do is, you know, you can probably make a terrarium in a, in a landscape, uh, in a landscape form. And, you know, that could be something really interesting, right? Okay, so primarily all containers that we use are made up of glass because the whole idea is that you should be able to see your scape, you should be able to see the plants and your terrarium from outside very easily. So, you know, stay away from bottles which has things written on it. That's one thing. Uh, don't use plastic uh, because I have seen some people using uh, plastic bottles to make a terrarium and it doesn't look great you know it will the plastic will not be clear you will not be able to see properly and again you know we we don't want to use plastic right plastic is something that's not sustainable so uh, let's not use plastic so that's about it for today thanks for watching this video if you like the content that i'm posting please do not forget to subscribe and remember to click on that bell icon so that you get notifications whenever i post a video thanks again